Please welcome Lockheed Martin Vice President of Product Development, F-16 and F-22 Integrated Fighter Group, Michael K. Wood. Not to brag, but I think I've got the best job in the world. I have the distinct honor of working with world-class engineers that support the F-16 Fighting Falcon and the world's best air dominance fighter, the F-22 Raptor. The fifth generation F-22's unique combination of stealth, speed, agility, and situational awareness makes the Raptor equal parts feared and loved, depending on who you ask. <laughs> While we're dominant today, our advantage is being challenged by two growing existential threats. The first threat is nation states that want to make capability that will make the dominance of the F-22 obsolete. And the second, is the threat of non-traditional competitors building capability faster and taking away our business. And these threats are proliferating faster than ever before. As Lieutenant Pete Mitchell once said, I feel the need, the need for speed. <laughs> Feeling the need for speed and actually achieving speed are two different things. Let me paint a picture of the traditional way we've done F-22 development over the years. Two to three years to develop a plan, five to seven years to deliver new capabilities. How's that for timeline? We adhere to a waterfall method of development following DOD 5000 series instructions. Move downing the systems engineering V, develop hardware and software independently, put the software into the hardware, and go through a series of tests at different levels of fidelity until we're ready to go to flight test. Flight test may take a year or more before we're ready to certify the capabilities are ready for operational use. Our hardware development cycles, our supply chain processes, and our development tools sometimes take years to accomplish. We are organized into functional silos that make communication difficult and delays our standard operating procedure. Oh, and because we're working with secure US government systems, timelines are even longer. Our ability to continue to stay ahead of the threat is increasingly becoming an exercise in insanity. So over six years ago, we attempted to implement agile methods into this environment. Without going into all the details, let's just say we successfully implemented scrum fall or water scrum fall and didn't achieve any improvement in our ability to deliver capability. Fast forward to 2017, we received feedback from our F-22 acquisition customer, the Defense Digital Services and the Defense Innovation Unit that we must change or be changed. We needed help. We couldn't do this one alone, enter Red Hat. We began the journey to change everything. We've changed the tools and installed a CI-CD pipeline based on OpenShift. We've also changed the facilities, the process, and the culture. We started with six engineers and have expanded to over 100 engineers, IT supply chain, and security professionals in just over a year. Along the way, we've had some help from our F-22 acquisition customer, the Defense Digital Services, the Defense Innovation Unit, the Defense Innovation Board, and especially Red Hat Open Innovation Labs. So how do we know it's working? Let me describe the things we've accomplished since February of last year. We partner with our government customer and the rest of our corporation to speed up the approval of software tools from months and years to a few days as we built our CI-CD pipeline. We've eliminated multiple day design reviews and now demonstrate capability maturity each sprint. We are using companies in Silicon Valley to build hardware and deliver it to us in five to 10 days instead of our normal one and a half to two years. We now build a minimum viable product so we can deliver capability to our customers as quickly as possible. We initiate a new team with a Red Hat enablement as a result of our forecasting accuracy for the team after one enablement improved 40%. After a Red Hat residency, a pilot in transition, and a dojo or two, we're on track to deliver a communications capability to the F-22 in about a year, 
almost three years early to the original waterfall-based plan. We know our culture is changing from a few anecdotal examples. During a customer visit, when the question came up as to how do we know if the, the changes are actually working, a young engineer who just happened to be in the area remarked that in just a few months, the energy level in the team was much higher than it used to be. The Defense Innovation Unit visited a couple months ago. At the end of the day, they remarked, if we had taken the bet that Lockheed Martin could not achieve this kind of transformation, we would have lost. And a member of the Defense Science Board also visited and remarked, we are actually doing the things that the DSB has been writing about for 30 years. These stories speak volumes about our transformation so far, but this is a journey, not a destination. With the Red Hat Partnership, we can see the day when we develop a capability, fly it the next day, and deliver it to the warfighter in a way that's similar to how we receive updates on our mobile devices. I'm excited about our ability to deliver capabilities to the F-22 fleet faster and more affordably. I'm even more excited to see what the future holds as we continue to revolutionize the way we think and scale this transformation to the F-16 and other Lockheed Martin products. Thank you, Red Hat, for letting me share our story and for your partnership with Lockheed Martin.